Hey, I'm Briston Maroney. I'm here with Nuance Magazine. <laughs> this is happening. So don't say it's not. I can do it again if you like. <laughs> you like that? Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, Deep Sea Diver is like the first single off of the record that'll be out next year. Um, I wrote it with this dude named Dan Wilson, who's like California OG kind of dude and a uh, great songwriter. And um, yeah, it's been really exciting to share music right now, but it's also just a really strange time, as we all know, to do anything like self-centric. So I don't know. I've tried to use Deep Sea Diver as like a a window into letting people know that like it is okay to have personal conflict right now at a time where the world is uh you know like in in mass conflict so um yeah your own struggles are like part of a bigger story so like i i know i'm i don't want to be the the focus right now but i think i just want to remind people that it's okay to go through those things because they're not doing that alone you know what i mean um the Best part of the deep sea diver process, there were probably two notable things. Uh, the like guitar part, the like main guitar part, the like wee wee wee. Uh, just hearing that sound for the first time and then just being like awesome. Like <laughs> just hearing that sound and knowing that that was something that we had like created was so exciting for me. Like, cause that, that tone that um, John, the producer like got just sounds like it's such a classic sound and it felt like really weird to have like any part in actually achieving something that sounded good. So uh, yeah, I was stoked about that. And then in the actual writing process, uh, when I was writing the song with Dan, I like sang him the line about ketamine in the second verse and he like let out this like very like, just like wise laugh. And that was probably the most satisfying moment by far to say ketamine, hear him just be like, <laughs> and then have the rest of the day <laughs> unfold was awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks for saying that, man. Yeah, Deep Sea Diver was like very much a song that I thought sounded substantially different than the rest of the music. And then upon time passing and listening like more and more to it, I realized how much of it just is representative of me and like how much uh, it connects to that the, the past songs and past recordings and stuff. So yeah, I, this whole record, I struggled a lot with thinking that I needed to take gigantic leaps and bounds, um, just like in songwriting and in style, um, because I guess that's what you do when you're fucking 22, you know what I mean? And like felt some pressure from outside sources for sure to like try to take a big swing. So it, <laughs> Deep Sea Diver is a really funny thing to me to look back and in my mind, it was this massive, like, I'm gonna be this person. And then listening to it now, I'm like, yeah, it sounds like I was like a little bit stoned in California and with my friends and like having fun. So like, yeah, that's, I don't know. It, it was very like grounding to, to write that song and work on it. I think everywhere that I've lived has definitely like left me with some new ideas every time I've left somewhere, uh, not in like a, that sounded really pretentious, like, yeah, I've been inspired by everywhere I've traveled, but <laughs> um, yeah, man, I think the South will always have a, a really big impact on the way that I see, like, beautiful things, you know what I mean? There's like a beauty to certain parts of the South that are, um, you know, that you won't find anywhere else. Um, but growing up here, you also see sides of you know where you're from that you don't connect with and you don't understand and so yeah but but like the south has always had a really big impact on just what i've like valued creatively um and what i've like learned to find beauty in for sure but california is cool too <laughs> yeah dude i think i i wish so much i could go back to how i felt at like 12 or 13 when I got into all this shit because I did not have a single fucking goal. Like I just loved doing what I was doing. And like, 
that was the beauty of what was happening. Like it was just straight joy every time I did this. So yeah, I, I didn't have a goal. It was like every day uh, I would come home from school and just, just play because it was like, I don't want to do anything else. Um, and yeah, as you get older, I mean, you know how it goes. You like take a passion that you have and it shapes into something completely different and people start telling you what it should become and uh, it can just diverge from what it originally was. But yeah, I mean, at the beginning, and I'm trying to get back there, I didn't have a goal. I just liked playing, you know. I would dare say both far too late in the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, basketball. Well, let's do music. Let's do the, the not fun one first. Music uh, as a career is still a really strange thing to me. Like I still do a lot of odd jobs and sell clothes on the internet and like we'll go mow people's lawns for money and stuff. So like I still, music as a career seems like a really um, like fluid thing to me. So I don't know. But once I realized it's what I wanted to do was Probably like two or three years ago when we started touring, I fell in love with touring and it's my favorite thing to do ever. Sucks that we're not doing that right now, but no one is. So we come hang out in Suwannee, Tennessee in, a, in the 1970s. Uh, yeah, basketball though, I did not, like I literally didn't give up on that dream until very recently, right now, in this moment, I'm giving up on basketball and I don't, like that y'all are seeing this happen but it's not gonna not gonna go anywhere and i've learned to accept that i was just talking to a friend about this i think it's so relative right now like everyone's definition of success is just completely based on what they want it to be so like right now i feel really satisfied with what's happening in that I'm able to sit at home, you know, and try to be as safe as possible during like everything that's happening in the world and people are still somehow hearing the music and still reaching, you know, new heights of like as far as people listening. So in my mind, that's like all I could ask for. Um, and it's, yeah, it's shaped over the years, man. Like 19 year old me would have thought success was like all of my friends thinking I was an asshole, but me like, you know, being able to accomplish these big things and like as I've gotten older, I've just my values have shifted so much of like I just love my friends and I love people and I want to like be happy <laughs> you know that is it's like cliche as that is that's you know success in my mind now like yeah I mean it all started in the basements just like a lot of you know people do and I like my first tour was with a bunch of friends from Nashville and we played in people's living rooms for 40 days straight. It was like a 40 day, 40 show tour. And like, it totally should have made me never want to do that again because it kicked our asses, but it made me fall in love with the fact that every day was something new and like finding consistency within uh, constant changing was like something I really learned to like love. And it's still my favorite thing about life. But uh yeah, dude, I mean, those basement days were fucking awesome. Like, they're still, I hope we go fucking play basements when we can again, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing like that. Like, nothing like a, a show in some kid's basement that is condemned. In the case of your friend whose basement I played, literally got condemned like the week after we played it. But uh, yeah, man, to go from there to getting to play, you know, some of these bigger festivals and stuff, it's like, the energy is still there and it it's, I'm so thankful that we played in those smaller places so that when we get to the bigger stages, like the values are the same, you know what I mean? And like what is going to make a massive crowd of people want to be on your side is the same thing that makes kids in a basement want to be on your side. Like just learning to like, <laughs> I don't know, suffer together and be happy together and like have fun together or like need to get shit out together. Like it's all the same underlying thing in my mind, but yeah. Yeah, the basements are my favorite still though, <laughs> all that to say. <laughs> Dude, I just fucking miss people. Like I miss uh, being in a room full of people that are like, you get to decide like the number of possibilities that can come out of a night. Like you get to decide if you're gonna go talk to some kid that you think is cool, uh, you know, or somebody that you wanna meet and like, you, where you get to decide to like have your own experience at a show like I, I just miss the autonomy of like being 
in a space and getting to like write your own story for the night. And um, I mean, I can still do that kind of at my house, but the story usually ends up with just me doing laundry for no reason because I don't like, <laughs> I watched like all of Shit's Creek really fast, so I don't have anything else to do. But yeah, and apparently that's a debatable topic and not everyone is like on board with Shit's Creek. If you're not on board with Shit's Creek, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I guess to fill that gap of, of people and just like fulfillment in general, I've just tried to change my relationships with my friends and my family and like, I don't know, spend a lot of time talking to people that I love and just like paying attention to how important those relationships are. And I still play music a lot on my own. I still, you know, talk to my friends about music a lot. It's still a big part of my life, but like, I don't know, man, in the midst of like so much social change as well, um, getting involved with just like, you know, uh, trying to be involved with activism has been like really exciting too. Uh, and that has certainly filled that need for like community and purpose. And like, it's, I'm very thankful uh, for an opportunity to like try to lend a hand at a time where like music has disappeared. We all are searching for community and luckily, you know, there are people that are, are always open to like you extending yourself and helping other people. So I've been obviously would love to live in a world where we didn't constantly need social change. Uh, and I hope we get there someday. But right now I'm, I've just been like overwhelmed and incredibly thankful for how many people, um, have like, asked for help and like I and allowed me to ask for help and allowed I don't know just the world to ask for help and I think that's really awesome uh, at the beginning of quarantine I was going to a lot of protests and um, I mean what a amazing thing I don't know if you've ever gotten to go to a protest or like but Nashville was like fucking mind-blowing dude the protests were insane I mean thousands and thousands of people uh, scary in the midst of a pandemic, but I mean, it's what we fucking needed to do, you know? And uh, definitely want to add that they were so peaceful. Like, it was the most inspiring thing to go to like a Black Lives Matter movement protest and like just see actual fucking change happening in front of our eyes. Um, so like, I've been so inspired by like leaders in Nashville taking a stance um, there. I try to do a lot of stuff with No Kid Hungry too, which is like a badass organization that feeds like inner city students who especially have been affected by COVID, um, who aren't getting like sufficient meals. So like you can donate 50 bucks and feed a ton of kids. Um, so yeah, man, I sell clothes on Depop uh, and I donate a part of the uh, portion of the profits to No Kid Hungry. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. Gonna look great. <laughs> yeah, the edit's gonna be yeah. awesome. You can do like a whoosh. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I think she likes it. I know she loves me. <laughs> I think uh, she definitely likes um, the acoustic side of things a little bit more. She's still wrapping her mind around the rock and rolling. Um, but. Uh, I think my mom just wants me to be happy, which I think a lot of people's moms do, and I am pretty happy, so that's usually where that conversation ends. But yeah, she's, I think she's just glad that I'm doing what I wanna do. I hope, I don't know, I'm gonna see her tomorrow. She'll probably wanna go to brunch. We'll talk about it then. Update me. Brunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we have an album planned to come out top of next year, uh, you know, hoping that it's still like the appropriate thing to do. Releasing music right now, like I said, delicate thing. Want to be super intentional about the timing and uh, making sure that we're not taking up space that needs to be given to other people to speak. Um, but yeah, right now, filming a shit ton of music videos, getting ready, drop the album early next year. Um, yeah, that's about it. Hanging out. Got a PlayStation 2 recently. Kingdom Hearts, working my way through it in between my activism. <laughs>
you. I'm a I'm a coach's player, you know. <laughs> I'm not like a <laughs> I'm not some like stud, but I you know I take the coaching really well. So uh, any any Division three schools that even need someone to just like hold the door open for the rest of the team, call me <laughs> or zoom me. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.